Welcome to Stories Behind the Frames, a video series that will expose you to new artists and take you on an artistic journey. I'm your host, Dave Petty, and I'm thrilled to have you join us. Through my years at the Frame Center and my time spent in the South Shore art scene, I've had the opportunity to make many relationships with so many talented artists. Inspired by these connections and a wealth of untold stories, I've decided to share these conversations with you. The hope of Stories Behind the Frames is to show you new artists, the interesting artwork they create, and what a thriving art community we have here on the South Shore. Lisa is awesome. She just has this wonderful place, local pottery, just kind of tucked away in Norwell. I feel like it's a hidden gem. I always look forward to going into her store, just looking around, seeing the new stuff that she has out, looking at these handmade pieces of art. I really enjoy like talking to her and learning more about pottery in it's really easy to pick up on her enthusiasm and excitement talking about these pieces and about these artists who are creating them. All right, so we're here with Lisa today. Uh, Lisa Howard of the local pottery in Norwell. Um, this is a conversation I've been, you know, I've had numerous conversations with Lisa o- over the years, but uh, this is one that I definitely wanted to record and uh, share with everybody. So. Um, I'm excited that you, we, we actually finally put finally this together, together. And, yep. and I'm glad we're actually here because yep. I think that the backdrop is awesome and Thank you. given an opportunity to see some more of Thanks. the uh, stuff and share some more of the stuff with everybody. Yeah, thanks very much for coming. It's uh, We've known each other for a very long time. Yeah, so yeah. We've been friends a long time. It's nice to have you here. So thanks yeah. for having me on. My, my, my pleasure. Yeah, I think it goes back to, I think, I think we met uh, starting with the... Yeah, North, North River, River bartending. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yep. that's a, a ways back because I think a long, I was long time ago. Yeah. I think I was still drinking at the when I first was you bartending. May have, yeah. You may have I mean, been. You yeah. were the skilled bartender. I, I was just there was. to move that stuff around. Old, that was my old job. Was a bartender, an actual bartender for some mm-hmm. years before. That's what I did when I was uh, you know, learning how to make pottery. Yeah. And, uh, but I gave the obviously gave the bartender. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, when I opened my first gallery. Yeah, so. you th- you said that the, at the beginning it was the the bartending was supporting the pottery. Yeah, it paid all the bills. You know yeah. what I mean? So I was in there pouring drinks and you know just going to the studio afterwards. And yeah. I think a lot of people do that when they're young. They work in the restaurant industry, and I loved it. I loved being in the restaurant industry, but I didn't want to stay there. So, yeah. You no. Know, anyway, but it was a great way to make a few bucks and yeah. you know get here. So. So you've been in it, in this location has been since 2014. 2014, so, and yeah. you were in Pembroke before. 18, 18 years. years. Yeah. So I opened there in 1996. I was 24 years old, which yeah. is shocking to probably everybody, but also to me when I think about being 24 and being like, yeah, kind of open a gallery, and I just did. Yeah. Uh, and it's almost 30 years later. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Yeah, it, it is. 30 years. Yeah. It goes quick. It's, it does. Yeah, I've, it does. I've, I've realized that, uh, you know, yeah. re- realized that relatively watching my kids grow up, it's just like, oh, boom, mm. you know, a decade passes in no yeah. time. I keep getting kids, you know, well, they're not kids anymore. They're young people who have their own children, and they come back and talk about when they were little kids taking pottery classes for me, and I'm like, okay, that's officially a long time ago. Yeah. yeah so. So you have a lot of different artists in this in I, this space. I do, yep. I carry work from about sixty different people, and I have not just potters. I have jewelers and woodworkers and painters, photographers. Honey. Um, yeah, honey, food Salt, items, yeah. socks, textiles. Uh, we do a lot. I mean, it's a lot of things with a lot of craft in here. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I Thanks. mean, every time I come in, I see stuff that I want. And, you know, whether it's the salt or, yep. you know, I was just flipping through some of the cards. I yeah. find Beautiful it. cards. You know, yeah. Really uh, great artwork here. Uh, you know, obviously great pottery. Great, uh, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think the last things I picked up was some mugs on 
I think that was on Mother's Day. Right. Uh, and I remember, you know, yeah, you put some at the at your shop too. Yeah. No. Yep. We have a yeah. On, proudly on display. Thank we, you. We changed the uh, representing. Okay, trying, thank you very much. Trying to get you know better about uh, plastic too. So you know, using yeah. like uh, re refillable sanitizers. Re and, and the great. mugs are, you know, do a great job holding pens yep, and uh, sure keeping do. track of stuff. Yep, or your water or whatever. Yep, or water. Yep. And, yeah, you know, we're actually trying to set up some new displays and want to try to, like, keep incorporating that stuff in there. So I appreciate it. That's, yeah, yeah more of that. I get people who come in and say, oh, we saw your stuff at Frames on our uh, Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, no, people, I mean, I think it's it's funny. It, it took me a while to even make that connection um, that, like, you know, we want to push that people should be buying art and, you know, and supporting artists that, you know, we really, you have to live it too, right? You, you know, it, sure. you, and then I was like looking around and seeing that we had like a solo cup with, you know, pens in it. And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, that's just, it just it, yeah, and it just, you know, it, may, it helps the, the vibe of the store. Yeah. You know, we're artists, we're, you know, yeah, having art right, around, right, you know. Right, like every place that you can, you should, you know, yeah. especially when you're in the position that we're in where we're teaching so many of our customers about, you know, what's good, what's out there, what kind of things, because people feel a little bit distant from it sometimes, and yeah. it's a way for us to bring, especially if you ceramics, you can easily put that in anybody's home and yeah. just be like, baby steps, you know, yeah. just have, um, you know, get a bowl, get a cup, you know, that sort of thing, and they, and they just, you know, it's baby steps into having a collection. It yeah. doesn't, you don't have to buy a whole dinner or set, you can just yeah. find one little thing that you love and see how you feel with that in your life, in your home, you know, on your table when you're eating your yogurt in the morning or something. Yeah, no, I think it makes a difference. I mean, I have a cut. Some of them, you know, I think of them as art pieces. You know, I have like the two mugs I bought are like literally on it. I have. I don't know if I've drank coffee out of them oh, yet, but they're really like, but they're like, you don't on. drink your coffee out of them, so you really should use them. I know, I know. I, I you know, I, I bought the two mugs as a set for like, you know, a. So, you know, Jen could have a cup of coffee. We could have coffee together with matching mugs. Good, but, but you uh, just look at them instead. <laughs> yeah, well, they look so, I mean, they're, they look like yeah, the chart. Yeah, even better when you, st I mean, you feel like, the thing about ceramics is, right, you can really feel the hand of the potter in what you're drinking yes. out of, you know, so it's a very warming sensation. I'm not talking about temperature. I just mean you get the feel of someone else's hands in yeah. the thing. And that's pretty awesome to drink your coffee out of it. So, yeah. baby sticks, Dave. Yeah, baby I'll, sticks. I'll get there. I'm just, mm -hmm. I, 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 I want to think of I want to think of them as art, okay. and then, you know, well, I'll transition art, but that's what I'm saying. Art can even be in your yeah, coffee drinking in the morning, yeah. you know. It can be in every place in your life. All right, I'm going to go on a limb. When, she comes, when, when, <laughs> when Jen gets back we're gonna, from her trip, we're going to sit down and have a cup of coffee together. Awesome. I don't want to beat her to the punch. There yeah. you go. There you go. No, you got to share it. You have to share that experience with her. But, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 a, I'm going to, I'm going to make a point to get there. Yes. And you had a lot of nice art on the wall, too. I, I do. I have some really spectacular art on the wall right now. There's a lot of really good 2D, 2D work in yeah. the gallery right now. Yeah. See, uh, I see some Mike sleepers hanging yeah, around. Yeah, Mike's I, been with me for a long time. He's one of my favorites. And Mike used to be bartending back then, too. The two of yeah. us would be behind the bar <laughs> yeah. back in the early days at North River. And uh, schlepping drinks and yeah. making jokes. And we had a great time doing that. And that was a long, long time ago. Yeah. But anyway, he's here. And Peggy Roth made who's yep. a friend of mine has some work here and yep, I Mike, saw some Michael Coyne Michael Coyne yep Michael you just had the show last I uh, did yep that was great people love him yep. love his work his work is, is really something very special yeah, Michael's great, and then, yeah, yeah and, you know, that, that show seemed like it was a big success. When it was, yeah, it was, yeah, we moved a lot of paintings that, that night and the next day, and we still have some left, too, yeah. so, and he just dropped off a few new pieces, so you brought them. Too. Yep. So, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, no, they, they look, they, they, you know, those co the colors work in, in here well, mm -hmm. um, and then do you have a hard time finding artists or are they just knocking on your door constantly? No, I have, I have a pretty good time finding artists. I really like to do it. I travel quite a bit um, yep. and I talk to people a lot and I have a lot of friends and so it's pretty easy actually yep. in my world to find the art and bring it in. Uh, it's sometimes not a great fit for my particular clientele yep. so I curate the collection that's here a little bit, yep. uh, a little bit but um, yeah, no, we've had pretty good success with the people that we've had here. Yeah. You know, we'll rotate work in and out so that people get different flavors at different times of the year. So yeah. some people are here all the time, like their work is always here. Yeah. And then some people will have a show that's here just for a little bit of time and then they sort of move on once yeah. people have seen it. Yeah. We that's, do it a, a lot of different ways. Yeah. So. so when you look around at some of the stuff, do you feel like that it, 
like you know, are these all type of pieces that you'd have in your in your place? This looks or like my house. Yeah. Your house is yeah, it okay. does. So I have wood Very everywhere eclectic. and ceramics everywhere, yeah. and I have a lot of plants and gardens, and I'm a big collector of textiles too. So yeah. when you walk through here, it feels just exactly a lot of antiques in my house, yeah. a lot of uh, old rugs, yeah. that sort of thing. So. But usually pretty ratty old rugs, but yeah. I love them anyway. So. Yeah, that gives them more character. Yeah, right? it has a certain warmth and feeling to it too. Mm -hmm. So the same feeling I think is in the shop. Uh, yeah. When you're surrounded by handmade objects, it has a certain warmth to it. So, so if you're traveling and you see somebody's work that you, that you like, you just yeah. basically... I buy. Yeah. I buy and I bring it back. And it might be, like I've been all over Japan and I, I collected for my own personal collection, mm -hmm. uh, and that was uh, very challenging to get that all back from Japan, yeah. uh, because it was a lot of pottery, but also, I'll sometimes just jump in the car and go on to buying trips, like I did in North Carolina, trip. Mm -hmm. uh, there are terrific potters there, uh, yeah. they have clay right there, so they mine their own, sometimes in their own yards, they mm -hmm. build their own kilns, so I just go down on buying trips and bring yeah. it back, and you know, fill the gallery. I know what my customers like. Yeah. So I can sort of pick and choose and it's great fun. So, yeah. And also I spend an awful lot of time in Maine, so mm -hmm. I do a lot of buying when I go up there and bring it back. And you know, it's great. I don't find it hard to find beautiful things. Yeah. Sure. No, a lot of people are really great makers out there. And yeah. it's just pure joy for me to go out and find them and um, support them a little bit. Yeah. You know? uh, it's been it's a great business for me and so Yeah, no, I think it, I think that you know Part, part of the enjoyable, you know, working in the, like in a field with arts is like having those conversations with interesting Absolutely. people who are like yeah. very creative. Yeah, and, and it never ceases to amaze me too. You sort of, you just won't notice it and then you drive past someone's house and be like, what's that thing in his, that guy's yard? And then you realize he's a metal sculptor and he's yeah. in and, you yeah. know, or mosaic people or whatever, you know, whatever craft it is that they're in, they're there, you know, yeah. so. I really, I just think it's so worth it to take the effort to go and find the local arts organization and really dig in, do some studying before I hit the road yeah. uh, and find out whoever's in that region, you know, because sometimes it's not a region you're going to get to frequently, yeah. like when I was in the mountains out in North Carolina, you know, yeah. just finding little side roads and being able to find hidden to. pockets of people, like yeah. beautiful, beautiful craft for rural people. Mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. Now, do you like with, with the art associations around here? Are mm -hmm. you still connected Con or connected? Yeah, to some degree. Uh, like I have lots of friends in a lot of the arts organizations in yep. the area, and I sometimes will do shows and that sort of thing or demos. Yep. Um, I'm sadly not an active member in yep. a lot of arts, arts organizations, primarily just because I'm so busy here. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't leave up a lot of time, but. I used to be to be yeah. in a lot of them, but um, yeah. Do you enter any? It, almost never. Never. Almost never. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, you know, in my world, it's a little bit. You know, we're we're talking about that line between is it fine art or is it fine craft? Yeah. Right. And there's a oftentimes a pretty big distinction between mm -hmm. art and craft, and um, I'm not the one who's trying to jump into one as opposed to the other. Yeah. But I'm very happy in my space here, promoting yeah. what it is that I do. So. Um, being outside of here and entering in competitions and that sort of thing has never been something that appealed to me very much. Also, mm -hmm. um, POTS haven't really gotten into a lot of shows, so yeah. uh, sometimes they do. You know, sometimes yeah. they Well, you see, you see, sort of thing, but. Yeah, you know, I feel like I see ceramics in, in mm -hmm. you know, in shows. Not, a yeah. you know, not as many as you see paintings, but... Yeah, I tend to make tableware, though. So yeah. that's considered a real humble kind of craft. You yeah. Know, I make cups and bowls and plates and things for you to serve salad in. So mm -hmm. that isn't a thing that sort of gains a lot of attention in the, you know, quote-unquote art world, mm -hmm. but it does in the craft world. So, yeah. you know, craft world tends to be more show circuits as opposed to uh, galleries and arts yeah. organizations and that sort of thing. They want more fine art. and. There can be fine art that's made from ceramics, but it, I tend not to be classified in that group. So gotcha. I'm a craftsperson, primarily. Nice. No, it's all art as far as I'm concerned. Uh, me too, but <laughs> there, you know, when you really get down to it, there are yeah. a lot of people who are who work very hard at splitting those hairs, and I'm not one of them. So yeah. I'm just like, well, you know, that people get to have their opinion about things, so mm -hmm. um, I certainly have mine. Could we uh, could we pull a couple of pieces from some of the? 
sure. some, from some of the uh, artists that you, you feature in here. Sure, and, yeah, and, uh, absolutely. And maybe, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, we could start with uh, you sure. know, some of the works of your... Of, your, uh, of what we make here? Yeah. What right. you, yeah. So we're drinking out of cups that are what I call my studio line. So mm -hmm. I make my own personal work, which I've been making for a long, long time. I'll show you some of that, too. Yeah. Uh, and that's slip trailing. It's very intense. There's a lot of work in it. Uh, and this is sort of the more humble version of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we paint the colors. And when I say we, I generally make all the shapes. And then I do some of the painting. And there's a wax resist layer on it as well before yeah. we do some glazing. But I have people who work for me who help me produce yes. all of this work too. So we make this at a pretty good volume. Mm -hmm. We make the pot, trim the pot, and then you can see the colors we are banded yeah. on, and then paint it. Then it gets fired for the first time. Yeah. Then we paint it with wax. Then we dip it into a white glaze, which doesn't go where the wax was, and sort of, it's basically two patterns playing together. So there's the background color and then the top pattern, and mm -hmm. then they kind of work together. So it's a call and response sort of thing in a visual sense. And I love this line of work. It's really I yeah. I use a lot of it at my house, and I keep I keep bringing more home too, which is weird to me because it's not like I need pottery at my house. Yeah. But I'm like oh, I really love that one. Yeah. Uh, this place has this really fat, dirty kind of quality yeah. to it, so it looks wet. Uh, and I love it. It bakes beautifully. It cleans beautifully. Mm -hmm. Very very functional stuff. So uh, that's primarily what we sell here. That and my other personal line, which. People, other people don't have, well, I might get a little bit of help with some elements of making yeah. work, but we mix all our own glazes, we mix all our own slips, and the clay is a proprietary blend that I have custom blended and shipped up from Pittsburgh, so there's a lot of layers of work in what we're doing. Yeah, it sounds like there's a, it that. sounds like there's a, a bit to it. Yeah, it's not like just that you don't yeah. just pick up a big bag of clay. Shake and bake. Yeah, <laughs> and no. throw it in the microwave for 30 <laughs> seconds, you're all done. And the, yeah, yeah, and then you... you I assume that there's much like a painter's palette, there's a lot of different colors that you can Absolutely, be using. Absolutely, yeah, and I mix experiment. all my own. So I buy pigment from a pigment company, but then I sort of interblend all of those colors. Yeah. So I have my own personal palette, which changes radically throughout the year. Like this time of year, I like really quiet, soft blues and greens. <laughs> I'm really into green with pink right now. But like a dirty green and pink, not like a bright sort of color combination. But that's my love for gardening. That's showing yeah. up in the pots too. So uh, everything else they make, all my other slip trailing, I've just I'm all cobalt blue all the time. Always have been. Really. Always will be. Yep, yeah, that's my first love. So and there's a big history to cobalt blue, of course, in ceramics. So right. I guess I just like hooking onto that tradition too. So nice. But, and now you're kind of a, an outsider to the, the world of ceramics. I yeah. mean, what some of the things I've been seeing, you know, and I, I think obviously like I come in here and then I'll go somewhere else, I'll see something or I'll see something on, you know, uh, social media. Mm -hmm. What's the, you know, like if there's this thing like this and there's like the dent in it, mm -hmm. what's the significance of that? Is it's that, just a good grippy spot. So if you it, put a little dent in it, yeah, it feels great in your hand, your thumb catches right into it. So it functions as a handle, you know, okay. so rather than having to hold it and have your hand far away from it, which isn't always that comfortable on your wrist, yeah. you can just grab a piece and okay. there's a little dimple there and it's great for pouring vessels as well. Um, okay. Do you remember the orange juice containers when we were a kid and they had like a slot in them that yeah. your fingers would go on and you could pour that way? So it, it's all along those lines, it's just okay. you know, a design. I just thought it looks cool. Hand. I just think it looks cool. It does look cool. Yeah. One of the people who works there, her name's Emily Russ and she brings us a lot of beautiful pots and she makes a little shell stamp. Uh, and presses that in and that's so there's a little ridge there so it's a little bit grippy it's mm -hmm. beautiful and it's very comfortable to hold and drink out of cool yeah no i think i like i, I think i like the look of the things without the, yeah and, but and like i i didn't know if it was just like some sort of uh trick built potter's tra tradition or Probably, if it, it is more i don't of a, know i don't know about every single piece of pottery in the history of ceramics but yeah. that sounds like a pretty good a pretty good guess <laughs> so, a lot of cultures drink tea, and they drink them uh, drink tea not in a cup that has a handle on it. So, uh, you know. Yeah, the handles kind of get up in the way. Yeah. These kind of function that way too, because the clay that you're feeling on the surface is a little bit rough and a little bit grippy. So I love that quality about these too, because you can really kind of grab onto them. Yeah. They don't get slick. Yeah, no. You know, it doesn't like if you're feel drinking like... cold water, it doesn't get wet on the outside. So. But I can show you some Emily stuff too. Yeah. Right over there. So, yeah. Do you want me to pull? Yeah. Why don't we? Yeah. Great. Uh, you want to? You want to pull one? And I'll just pick and I'll pull one and just sure. do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Do I love? I'm going to show you some. Yeah. From Emily. 
Is that one a little shell? Yeah, that's the shell one. Yeah, it's got, yeah, it looks like a shell. I love those. And natural clay on the bottom. Yeah. Then they're, ni they're nice and heavy too. Some of the mm -hmm. glasses over there that I was looking at when Michael had his show. Yeah. Um, I just it feels it, I mean so much better than any, any anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But that's what I mean. Like, the why would you want that with your coffee in the morning? I just I can't get past yeah. that. <laughs> 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 I'm seizing you. So some of so. these like like the the temperature. This one's awesome too. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, that's Maureen Mills. She's one of my favorites. Yeah. So this is fired in a wood kiln, so the surface changes from side to side mm -hmm. based on where it's faced in the kiln. So this is a big splotch of wood ash that's melted onto the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, wood ash has everything a potter needs to make glaze. So this mm -hmm. is, in Japan, they would say naturally occurring glaze mm -hmm. uh, because it's come from the kiln itself. This is an applied glaze, but this is the naturally occurring, and this bleaching here is from yep. the wood ash, but you don't see it on that side. So, mm -hmm. ooh. Yeah, that one's yeah. that's awesome. It, that's it feels like you know, like that copper, like it, it has that that same. Yeah. Uh, I, what are those things that they drink the uh, mint juleps out of? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those <laughs> copper cups. Yeah, yeah it yeah, kind of yeah, has right. that. Like, it does it, have a little it, bit of a metallic feeling. This one has probably got much higher iron content in it. That's what gives it that kind of silky sheen. Mm -hmm. But I love the combination of both of those things. It just really. Ugh. And the more I find, the more I know about ceramics, the more interested I am to find the ones that are really unusual and made yeah. in these sort of highfalutin kilns. But uh, this one you can see on the bottom, that's how they get loaded into the kiln. We load it on this wadding, so it balances in the space like that. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, wood ash comes across and again bleaches it out on this side, but it's not bleached on that side. So you can read the temperature and where it was placed in the kiln. So there's a whole lot more information once you start learning a little bit about it. And that yeah. to me is very exciting. This is, uh, and so that, so those are both more emails. And then this is one that she's done in an electric kiln. So you can see there's some similarities between the mm -hmm. decorative style, yeah. but then the actual kiln firing changes everything. So we talk about giving it up to the kiln gods. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of have all this intent and then you put it in and you know, this is 24 hours later and this is a full week later. It takes 12 cords of wood over seven days. No we, kidding. we work teams of eight people, uh, uh, sorry, teams of six people, eight hours at a time, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day for a week. And it takes a week to cool that kiln and then unload it. So <laughs> this one's a little stressful. <laughs> yeah. But and how many pieces of, uh, like how many mugs are like bolt? There'll be hundreds and hundreds of pieces. It takes about 30 potters to fire that kiln. And mm -hmm. I haven't done it in a number of years. But it's a wonderful experience to be in a wood kiln firing with other potters. Everyone's all pulled together to do the work to get, get all of shift. the I've done the third shift before, and I have to stand up because otherwise I just fall asleep. Yeah. And I sometimes fall asleep standing up. I'm the older I get, the less good I am at staying up past like eight thirty. But yeah, so be it. I still, <laughs> I still do it sometimes, you know. And I'd like to go back and work at those kilns again. Uh, it's a really, like I said, it's a wonderful experience. Is that like a whole just commu like community? Yeah, people, there are or? wood kilns sort of, they're getting more popular. There's one down on the south coast that uh, belongs to Chris Gustin, and he's the one that I've worked at. His kiln, which is this incredible kiln, huge thing that climbs up the hillside of yep. his house. And that's what a lot of the folks who sell work here fire at that kiln. Mm -hmm. But there are a bunch of other ones in the area too. There are a couple up in Maine. There's a kid in Norwell who built one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're around. It's a popular style of firing. It was popularized from uh, Japan. Yep. You know, this uh, movement of studio potters that kind of came out of England and Japan, you know, mm -hmm. in the beginning part of the last century. Uh, in mid-century and you know it's it's gained a lot of popularity in yeah. the last number of years I fire in, in an electric kiln okay. which is a much cleaner faster uh, way of firing but it certainly doesn't have all of the variabilities that the larger uh, what we would refer to as an atmospheric firing right, and well, so much that goes on in those kilns I feel like I learned something every time I didn't even know there was a difference between huge, the kilns huge huge difference fuel the fuel and the atmosphere in the kiln changes everything so you get either sort of clean and light firings mm -hmm. from uh, electric, what we would consider to be a neutral atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then we can have an oxidizing atmosphere, which brings more oxygen in, or we can have a reduced atmosphere, mm -hmm. which pulls oxygen from the materials that are in the glazes. 
-hmm. So you can have a copper. Yeah. So you know how if you have an old piece of copper, it turns green if it's gone yeah. oxidized? The same is true in a kiln. So it's the same in a glass face. If you've got copper in an oxidized atmosphere, you get green. If you have it in a reduced atmosphere, you get cherry or blood red. Uh, and sometimes it'll change to be half green and half red. So yeah. it's kind of interesting. Yeah. But uh, controlling those atmospheres is you know, a life's work. Yeah, well, it's, it's amazing. It's, I think that the idea of working on something like that for a week is kind of, is cool. It's pretty awesome, I have yeah. to say. I mean, it really puts a, you know, an unbelievable value on something like this. It does, it, thank you very that, much. Knowing that like, it's one of a, you know, one it's of a one kind. Of a kind. They meet her, she was trying to it's make a few similar. Every single piece is singular, and you can have pieces that come from the same fire and with the same materials. That's why I brought that two of them over, so you can mm -hmm. see it's the same materials. But this one was placed in this spot, and this one was placed in another spot. You can also sometimes see shadows from the pots that were placed near it. So if you have the wood ash blowing through mm -hmm. and something is blocking the piece that you're firing, you get a little ring that doesn't have any sort of wood ash on mm -hmm. it. So actually you have to think about how you're painting the pots with wood ash as you're loading that kiln. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. So they're just a lot of layers. It's not just the intent of the pattern that you're laying on there or the color choices that you're making. There's so much more to it. It's a holistic approach to making pots. Yeah. It's kind of thrilling, I think. I yeah, no, it is. It's I, super I, interesting. I, I love it. <laughs> well, also, every time we co I come in here, I feel like I have a, you know, an interesting conversation. I learn something. Great. Okay. And you know, hopefully I don't open the door to <laughs> millions of people just stopping by and asking you questions. I hope they do. I mean, really, honestly, we're all so devoted to ceramics here, everybody who works it's fun conversations. You know, and we're happy to teach people because it's really, you know, we've put so much into making these pots. People yeah. think, and I always say, like, don't feel like you have to buy something when you come here. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind of shop that we are. We're really about teaching. Mm -hmm. you know, eventually, you're going to buy a mug from me. That's I'm not concerned about it. But come yeah. enjoy the stuff that's here. A lot of people who show here have work in museums, mm -hmm. uh, are in private collections and public collections. It's really interesting work. You know, yep. So you can come and you can pick things up and you can learn a little bit about it and do it in a way that's, you know, like I said, baby steps. You learn a little bit about it and allow yourself to gain a little bit more knowledge about it. It's a very interesting craft. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, just talking a lot, I mean, for the customers, educating customers is kind of, is an important step. For yeah. sure, yeah, for sure. Because people don't know about it, because we don't have the culture and the history of that in this country. I mean, there's a lot of ceramic history yeah. in this country, but not in the way that there there is in some other countries. Yeah. So I'm happy to teach people about it and get them excited, because then they get to have these little prizes, and all of a sudden, something different happens when they have, you know, their yogurt out of a piece that was made. Yeah in some special way, it's a really wonderful bit of information. You have to know that someone put an incredible amount of energy and effort into making that piece. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to just eat some yogurt or ice cream out of it is kind of awesome. Yeah. Know? It really does elevate every experience. Well, so. I, mean, I, you know, one of the things that we, we've been talking about too is like doing, you know, we started doing classes recently at the Frame Center. And like doing like, yeah, so we have a, a Renee McMurray, do you mm -hmm. know Renee? Uh, I, I don't think I do. She said she wouldn't need a space, so we started doing some classes there. But like, it, using this space for something else at night mm -hmm. um, is a, is cool. And I want to do like some like talks and like I think that Great. I think that I, I talks on <laughs> talks on pottery. <laughs> I think are in the uh, Love to. Uh, yeah. you know like uh, some of the process because I mean sure. I think that getting that stuff out there I think is would be cool. Yeah, you know? people and I think get people very, will be interested to hear. People are very excited about it, and it's really it's. I mean, you can make it as complicated as you want to. I'm not saying that there isn't a lot of research and data that has to be sort of understood to understand how to achieve these particular firings and surfaces and make it food safe and all of those things. But you can also just like make a little something out of a piece of clay and put some glaze on it and get it back and like look at it and be like, wow, yeah. it's this whole thing, this transformative process that it goes through that you participate in is very thrilling. It's thrilling to have it come back and be like, mm -hmm. oh, I understood it enough that I made this permanent object. You yeah. know, it's never gonna degrade, it's never, I mean, it can't be. Yeah, they don't, don't take care of it. Well, I mean, the bounce factor is low, you yeah. know? So if you're dropping them on the floor, they're, they're all done. But it'll still be permanently fixed, you know, the glaze is permanently fixed on there. So it's pretty exciting stuff and it's empirical. You do a little thing and then you learn another little thing yeah. and then add that into your process and, you know, you're on your way. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. It is. You know, cool. So that's great that you're teaching. So I pulled a couple too. Yep. And what the beautiful. Yeah. 
I mean, the, just the colors in this are, I, I was like drawn to. Mm -hmm. Incredible, um, yeah. Who is, who is so that? this is Jason Silverman. I've carried his work for a long, long time. We have a big batch of it coming in, actually. And he's really a glaze master. He works on a porcelain clay body. Okay. So it's a light, bright clay body. So the yeah, that one has a shine to it mm -hmm. compared to some of the well, other Well, it's a glossier glaze. So this one, he makes a high gloss glaze and mm -hmm. then puts a ton of pigment. And what he's able to do, he gets these like starry constellations yep. kind of yeah that's like, what i felt like it, like the night sky or something yep. he's incredible with glazes there there's really i don't know anybody else who does glazes the way he does really so looking at the stuff you when you see a piece yeah you know, that's that's a, the gla you know the glaze mm -hmm. that's like you can tell yeah you know, yeah i mean there are different points it's like music right yep. like you, do, you can have the same song and have 10 different people sing it and it's an entirely different experience every mm -hmm. single time and ceramic materials are much the same way it's a great analogy because we're all taking a piece of clay and making a copper bowl out of it that mm -hmm. there's you know so much that you can say with it there's so many different ways to express yourself through the medium yeah that's what i find so interesting about it so and i celebrate that about every single person like oh that guy's doing this thing yeah. this person's doing this and you know jason's all about color and glazes yeah. and surface and his glazes are absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. and the way they fit on the clay body too that perfect sheen there's no mm -hmm. crackling or crazing it's just he knows what he's doing yeah he's uh is that like, are you dipping it into something? Or are you brushing yeah, he's, that off? Yeah, he's dipping. Uh, mm -hmm. So he would probably dip the whole thing at first, and he might hold it here. He might mm -hmm. use tongs, too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use metal tongs. Yeah. And then you can dip it through the glaze, and then he probably holds here and dips just the rim in that second glaze. Mm -hmm. So this is reduction fired, and you can see the kind of reddish tones in that purple. Yeah. So that's the thing I was saying about copper, kind of goes red when, yeah. it's, uh, when you remove all the oxygen from the kiln. The flames actually seek oxygen particles from the glazes, so it pulls all of that oxygen from the copper and turns it kind of pinky purpley like that. Mm -hmm. So you really have to know what you're doing to get glazes to do that. Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't go anywhere. That's just not what I do. Yeah, you know, I do a very, very. Different well, they all. I mean, you know, they, they, I mean, they're all beautiful pieces, and they all, mm -hmm. you know, have like you know, so so much different qualities. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's, really different personalities, though. Yeah. You know, just like music can, or people, or whatever. So. When you see a piece of pot, like now knowing all these people, when you see the pottery that they produce, is there certain traits that you put with, uh, with for, people for personalities? Yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can see absolutely. When, you, when you see a piece of pottery, you kind of have an insight to what type of person. Oh, I don't know if I can read that so much. Yeah. I guess sometimes, like, but the, he's not like a showy person, but his glazes are very showy. Yeah. He's a, like brilliant scientist kind of guy. Yeah. You know, quiet, soft spoken, uh, and not not real uh he's friendly i don't mean to say he's not yeah. friendly but he's not like a very outgoing person but his pots sure are yeah like every color combination that he makes is like yeah the colors on those are stuff you, 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 you know you're walking by it's just yeah. like eye catcher mm -hmm. yeah people love it mm -hmm. yeah so but that's not so i can't look at that and be like oh i would expect someone who's like in like yeah. You know, some woman in a big red dress or something. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not. He's just really quiet. He's got like little wire rimmed glasses mm -hmm. because he's in his glaze lab all the time. That's yeah. his real passion and joy. You know, that's different from other people. So. And then another one I grabbed was, was yeah. this one. Eric Wilson. Eric's pretty new for me. He works up at Mudflat in Somerville, which is this great ceramic studio up in the city. If you don't know about them, you should check them out. No, they do I'll, I'll have to. An incredible, incredible job. They have a huge clay school up there mm -hmm. and kilns galore. And lots of people in the city work out of that studio. So that's a place where people will have small studio space or they take classes there. Mm -hmm. So the whole community gets access to a ceramic studio through the work that Mudflat has done. They've really done an incredible job. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's on the board and makes these beautiful, humble, yeah. quiet. Now is that, it, it, like that palette of colors, is that kind of like, you know, do a lot of potters stick to like one type of look or are they? Mm, that's hard to answer. I mean, I think for people at any one point, they might yeah. have a limited, um, range of expression mm -hmm. but throughout a career that might be much broader like yeah. you might do this for a number of years and then yeah. you might shift to something else mm -hmm. and then develop something else i know for myself i've been making for 30 something years and the work that i've made has taken on a bunch of different styles mm -hmm. but there's always a thread that ties through. Yeah. so uh 
you look at like a lineage of uh, well if of you your, did if you your, took a, uh, if you took all my pots and you put them in a line you see that connects to that and that connects to that mm -hmm. and that connects to that which also connects back to that mm -hmm. you know you can see threads that go through the work because there's stuff that's important to me right yeah so there are certain things that I do there's certain shapes that I make uh, certain colors that I love yeah I always have a little bit of brown in what I do. A little no. bit of white, a little, you know. Is that another one from you, of, your, of yours? Or no, is it, this, this is Steve Murphy. This so, is and I, I, Steve has been with me for a long time. Steve also fires at the same wood kiln okay. uh, down in Dartmouth, and he's Boston Potter. He's up in the city. Uh, teaches at Harvard. Mm -hmm. uh, works out of mud flat as well sometimes. It almost has like a, like it feels like a gold type of... It looks that way, but that's just a little bit of a luster that happens in that firing um, the way that that happens it's a little bit of a metallic sheen that mm -hmm. happens from that wood firing so and then what does he just carve all that stuff all in? of that is carved out of there so he has these uh, this one is an angry bunny that's crushing the city of Boston <laughs> and uh, what else oh there's like another bunny too and a little man who's getting crushed by yeah. a large bunny so Steve is a really funny guy he makes Steve like uh, he's probably an interesting guy he's a super interesting guy he's really funny he was here the other day he just dropped off some pots uh, and he usually makes they look sort of like uh, dinosaurs so he calls mm -hmm. them Cretaceous crushing uh, crushing Cretaceous critter cups yeah so and they all have buildings from Boston that he carves onto the surface Steve worked in Nagano in Japan for a number of years under a master there so he has a lot of Japanese influence in his work mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of Japanese style he makes a lot of his own tools and there are lots of little things about the work that mm -hmm. uh, bring Japan back to the US so yes, it, it, yeah. I could go on and on about the uh, little places where there's Japan showing up. Yeah, no, it, I, I, mm -hmm. I look at it and I, see, and, you know, you, you know, the more you stare at these things, the more you... The more the, information. The more information. Artists who are really highly evolved, they put a lot of information into their pieces. It's a real joy to discover. Now, when you, uh, you, you said he dropped off a, pile, a bunch of stuff. Yep. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, a bunch side. of stuff. That's okay. <laughs> a bunch of pieces. Yeah. Uh, but no, like, you, if you... Do you get a lot of clients that are like interested in his stuff and just all of a sudden, oh, we just got, Steve sure. just dropped off a, yeah. bunch, uh, a bunch of pieces. Yeah. You probably should come down and take a look. Yep. Uh, we do say that. So we'll post it sometimes when somebody yep. drops, makes a delivery because everything is small batch. Everything here is small batch. I have 60 people who, who sell work here, mm -hmm. but it comes out of a kiln one piece at a time. You know, yep. we're not, you know, calling up and getting another delivery. Yeah. People are hand making everything that's sold in this shop. So we get just a couple of boxes yep. every now and again and pick through it and, you know, the best stuff goes really quickly. So yeah. I tell people, don't feel like you have to buy when you come, but, you know, check in often because your favorite potters, their best stuff moves, you know, the very best pot from a batch, right? Mm -hmm. Like, somebody's on that immediately, yeah. you know? It's usually me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see them, you're like, oh, well, which one? Yeah, like, they, they all have their own personality. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You just, you know, you don't want to miss, yeah. You don't want to miss it. And then, you know, yeah. if, you, so. if you do, then you are, yeah. Yeah. They, they become, uh, you know, they grow and they, they get even better if, yep. you, if you do it. Yep. With so. that regret. Yeah. But he dropped off a batch uh, just yesterday. He brought in some new work. Uh, oh, two days ago, he brought in some new work. And we're having a second sale this weekend, too. Yep. So yeah. he brought in some pieces for a second. So we get <laughs> well, it. Truly over that, which, you know, uh, seconds sometimes are just whatever work that's older and didn't sell or something. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think I think that we've got enough for part one. I think we're definitely coming back for part two. I, there's a certain uh, energy that you can feel when you come in here and like the creativity of everything. And it's, I, you know, I, I enjoy it. And, Thanks. you know, I'm not, you know, I don't, I know nothing about pottery, but I know when I see something, I like the, the way it looks. Yeah. And then, if I can afford it, it's, yeah. uh, you know, and I would suggest that everyone, you know, try to, you know, why not have a couple things? I'm probably going to walk out with a couple <laughs> things today. Maybe. Huh? Wait till tomorrow, because that's when all the bar goes. Yeah, but I don't want to, so. what if someone beats me they here? Might, they like, might, they might. I know. This one, I'm staring at this one. Yeah, every time. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a risk. Great. Well, thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and keep the notifications turned on so you don't miss any of our future episodes.